that the years of physical abuse. What happens after you have, if you have that 15 year old girl or female who goes and kills in, in the sleep the, um, her step parent, her father after years and years of sexual abuse? There are other cases that may not be appropriate for waiver. And once you place that child in the adult system, what if the, the killing occurred when, when the person was asleep? You don't have a self-defense. You get hit with a manslaughter conviction. That's 20 years in the adult prison. Uh, until we can protect juveniles better from uh, abusive uh, environments, sexual, physical, psychological abuse, I think this protection has to remain in place so that the court can deal with cases on an individual basis and so that it's not this great net that applies to every single juvenile case that uh, falls into this category. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to testify on House Bill 819? Seeing none, members, questions? Do you know the demographics of the murder rates? Is this, as just spoken, a single incident, or is the murder rate, or the murderers becoming younger and younger? Um, I can give you a few examples, just off the top of my head. The recent home invasion on Ali Amano, where they did a home invasion part of a robbery, all of those suspects, with the exception of one, were juveniles. The only reason that isn't a murder is because the miracle work the Queen's Hospital did to save him. But he was horrifically wounded, and all of them were juveniles. Um, the only reason I'm hesitating is because I want to make, I don't want to say a name unless I'm sure they were waived. We're saying more of a statistic, actually. I can ask for you as, as to is it, if this is a beginning of a trend or is it something as is, is a, a, a single incident? I can say that it's certainly not a single incident in Honolulu and it's not a single incident nationwide. There is an increasing trend of increased violence from the females. The research certainly will support that. Are drugs a, a part of this scenario also? I believe drugs are part of it, sir. So the no motive for committing the initial crime. And what's the difference between a adult yeah. criminal mind that commits murder and a, and a, and a 17 year old criminal mind that commits murder? It's a, a funny question to me in the sense of anything in, in both law enforcement and in other areas. I've seen the research, I've seen the MRIs. I'm pretty well informed on it. Um, if you went down to the standard for uh, mental evaluation, criminal responsibility, the ability to recognize the difference between right and wrong, and the ability to control your behavior, that would be the standard I would apply to juveniles. Do they know right from wrong, and can they control their behavior? I know that their minds are not completely fully developed in the frontal lobes. However, I also know they're well aware of the difference between right and wrong, and the ability to control that behavior. And last question is, when you said this was delayed five times, was there any substantive difference in each of those hearings that justified further delay and delay, or was it more of a strategic tactic? I'm not sure of the exact details for two reasons. One, as you know, all juvenile hearings are not public, which is part of another bill to make them, these type of cases, directly public. So no one knows exactly what happened. Because they're all closed sealed records that the juvenile here. I don't even know how much information the family's given. But this bill passed it goes straight to the trial. Just these very limited cases. Murder first, murder second. Juveniles 15 to 7. And there's no, the attempt language isn't in here. So I mean, you're talking a very narrow window for very specific very dangerous people. Thank you very much. Members, Rep. Bilotti had a question. Is there someone from the judiciary? Or, um, 
exception to that six month period. But um, uh, I would assume that uh, a similar type of time frame can be, be uh, placed on waiver hearings. And a court uh, would have to make a decision, say within 60 or 90 days. Uh, I'm sure there would be uh, some concern as far as meeting that time frame. And if, um, you know, oftentimes, a lot of the delay is having uh, the medical professionals take a look at, at the child. Um, and I know that we, we're in an adult court, we're experiencing uh, a hard time uh, getting professionals to take those kind of cases because of the level of compensation. So I don't know that that problem exists in family court either uh, also. But, um, is there a reason why there is no time limit imposed in the judicial uh, system, or is it just kind of There just lot? never has been, um, and uh, I, I, until recently, I guess with this particular case, there really hasn't been much of a problem in that. But I, I mean, I, I would prefer to have those questions answered by Judge Wong, because she's a real expert in this area. Members, any, any other man, questions? Do a follow -up question on that? Sure, if there was a time limit, what would you suggest? Is uh, you know, again, I, it, one day, one month, six yeah. months, six weeks, a year? I think 90 days to six months. Um, again, I, I would prefer <coughs> to have the input of the judge because I don't know how these cases are signed to the individual judges. I don't know what their uh, problems uh, are in terms of getting professionals uh, to work on these cases. So, thank you. Uh, the victim's daughter, what would you say as an expeditious time frame by which a trial should be proceeded? When do you believe your mother would have?